In Hogwarts Legacy, Ravenclaw is typically the third most popular house within the game. Typically, Slytherin and Gryffindor are the most popular houses for players to pick, and then Ravenclaw falls just behind them, with Hufflepuff tending to actually be the least popular house to choose in Hogwarts Legacy. But there are still thousands and thousands of people picking each house, and there's definitely good reasons to pick every single house in the game, and I have already done a video going over each house in the game and reasons why you should join those houses, and a link to that video will be in the description below, and I'll link it at the end of this video but we're going to be doing a complete beginner's guide to the Ravenclaw house in this video not necessarily going over why you should join the house but going over what you should know if you're going to pick this house or if you've already joined the house however if you are thinking of joining Ravenclaw then this may tempt you to join it or of course it may steer you away from Ravenclaw so yeah today's video is a complete beginner's guide to the Ravenclaw house going over some specific Hogwarts legacy information about the Ravenclaw house in the game and how the house will work and the exclusive parts of the Ravenclaw house and then we'll also go over some general Hogwarts information about the Ravenclaw house, not necessarily specifically related to Hogwarts Legacy, but related to the entire Hogwarts world. So yeah, let's waste no more time and let's get into this beginner's guide to the Ravenclaw house in Hogwarts Legacy. Ravenclaw was one of the four houses of Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry. Its founder was the medieval witch Rowena Ravenclaw. Members of this house were characterised by their wit, learning and wisdom. The emblematic animal symbol was an eagle and blue and bronze were its colours. The head of Ravenclaw was Phileas Flitwick, and the house ghost was the Grey Lady, real name Helena Ravenclaw, daughter of Rowena. Ravenclaw corresponded roughly to the element of air, and it was for that reason that the house colours were chosen. Blue and bronze represented the sky and eagle feathers respectively, both having much to do with air. The Ravenclaw Point's hourglass contained blue sapphires. Ravenclaw House prized learning, wisdom, wit and intellect in its members. Thus, many Ravenclaws tended to be academically motivated and talented students. They also prided themselves on being original in their ideas and methods. It was not unusual to find Ravenclaw students practicing especially different types of magic that other houses might shun. Hermione Granger, an extremely intelligent witch, was the top student in her year, was sorted into Gryffindor, though she admitted that the sorting hat had seriously considered placing her in Ravenclaw. Often hardworking and diligent, as often was the case, with intellectuals with a predisposition for academics. Some of the pupils sorted under the Blue Bronzed Eagle were known to be inclined to dismiss certain social expectations for the sake of satisfying their own intellectual curiosity. Some of these eventually also ended up being not only accepted but even celebrated in, spite of being initially subjected to scorn for their various oddities. Luna Lovegood, for example, was one of such students. Eccentric, to put it at its mildest, she was a Ravenclaw student who initially was bullied for her open defiance of conventionality, but ultimately became a celebrated wizarding naturalist and renowned for her participation in the legendary Battle of Hogwarts and past membership in Dumbledore's army. Another example would be Professor Phileas Flitwick, a half-goblin who might have faced scorn for his stature earlier in life, but went on to become a renowned dueling champion, and subsequently one of the finest and most knowledgeable charms masters in the entirety of the wizarding world during his employment at Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry. The best according to some of his students, actually. Ravenclaws tended to be curious about the world and paid attention to the world around them. Ravenclaws were known to be logical and rational. In addition, Ravenclaw students tended to have abilities regarding memory. Ollivander, for example, possessed an outstanding memory and can actually remember every single ones that he has sold, and Lockhart had an exceptional talent in the memory charm. Even so, not all Ravenclaws were motivated by academic prowess. Examples of such individuals included Lockhart and Chang, both of whom sought to use the good name and renown of their house. The inherent expectations of certain academic prowess that came with being sorted into it, as well as the often somewhat natural ability of its members to gain popularity among their peers, which particularly was the case of the former, proving true the fact that a good student did not necessarily make a good witch or wizard. Ravenclaw House appeared to have little rivalry with the other houses, except when it did come to Quidditch. Harry Potter believed that they tended to side with Gryffindor in its rivalry with Slytherin, as did the Hufflepuff house. However, during the 1994 Triwizard Tournament, most Ravenclaws supported Hufflepuff champion Cedric Diggory over Harry. They believed that Harry had in fact cheated his way into being a champion, and that the true Hogwarts champion was of course Cedric. Many Ravenclaws
Claws, joined Dumbledore's army, and fought in the Battle of Hogwarts, along with Gryffindors and Hufflepuffs. They rose at almost the exact moment as the Hufflepuffs and turned their wands upon Pansy Parkinson and Slytherin House in Harry Potter's defence when the former wished to hand Harry over to Lord Voldemort and his army of Death Eaters. According to Slytherin Prefect Gemma Farley, Ravenclaws were so competitive when it came to academic success that they were known to backstab each other and likely other students in order to get top marks, while Hufflepuff Prefect Gabriel Truman noted that they were so proud of the success of famous members, that they claimed any intelligent wizard as a member of Ravenclaw House. Some Ravenclaws, such as Yurik the Oddball, were also noted to have propensity towards eccentricity. So there you go, that was some information about the Ravenclaw House. Of course, not exactly specific to the Hogwarts Legacy game, but it does all still apply. All of that is of course about the Ravenclaw House, which is a house that you can select in Hogwarts Legacy. So it all makes sense and it all does still apply to the game, but of course it doesn't specifically apply to the game itself itself, since all of this is set in different time periods. For example, the Hogwarts Legacy game is set before the events of Harry Potter, so not all of that information will apply, but I still think it's good to know it, since if you're going to join the house, it's pretty cool to know all the information about the house, and of course the house's history and the main events that did happen involving the Ravenclaw house. But now we will focus on the Hogwarts Legacy specific information, so yeah, let's get straight into that. The Ravenclaw common room in Hogwarts Legacy is within the Ravenclaw Tower, one of the three tallest towers in the world of Hogwarts. Ravenclaws get a fantastic view of the Great Lake, the Forbidden Forest, the Quidditch Pitch, and even the Herbology Greenhouses. This room is described as actually the airiest one of all the common rooms. It is a wide circular room with a fireplace in the middle and arched windows all over the walls, giving it a spacious and well-lit atmosphere. Now, instead of just doing a really, really detailed description of the common room, I'm just going to play a tour of the Ravenclaw common room, and I'm going to play that now so you can get a feel for how it will actually look in game. So yeah, I'll play that tour right now. So there you go, that was a complete tour of the Ravenclaw common room, and personally, this is actually my favourite common room in the game, and it is the house that I picked when I first played Hogwarts Legacy. I went with Ravenclaw, first of all, it was actually the house that got recommended to me, and it was the one that I went for. Yeah, personally, I really like the colours of the house and the overall atmosphere of the common room. I think it's a pretty solid house in the game, and quite a nice midpoint, actually. It's not, you know, too maybe generic in a way, was going with Slytherin or Gryffindor, but of course, with Hufflepuff, you're maybe not quite as involved as you'd want to be, and I think Ravenclaw is a pretty good midpoint in my opinion, but of course everyone's opinion does vary, and I'd love to hear your thoughts on the Ravenclaw house down in the comments below. But that does just about wrap up things here. That was a complete beginner's guide to the Ravenclaw house, going over some general information about the Ravenclaw house that of course isn't Hogwarts Legacy specific, but general to the Hogwarts world, and then of course we went over the Hogwarts Legacy Ravenclaw house specific information, including what the common room is like. Now, like I mentioned earlier on, I have done a video going over each house and why you should join them in Hogwarts legacy and if you're interested in watching that then the link to that video is on the screen now and you can go ahead and join me over there.